How's it my bros? I'm cracking on with the gas to swing arm. There's a lot to do, so we best crack on with it. Gonna get Cindy to knot some tubes. You're gonna get to know the chainstay fixture and the tube notcher. You can actually have a swing arm type thing by the end of it. And if you're new here, you should definitely go back and check out the other videos to catch up. These are the tubes that I use for the seat stays and chainstay front tubes for the drive side and non-drive side. Now they're both 4130 tubes. It's way thicker than I need it to be. Chainstay rears and seat stay rears are only about 0.9 millimetres thick, whereas this is 1.24 millimetres thick. It's just the thinnest stuff that was available to me, so that's what we're using. Like I said, it's way too thick and strong for what we need it to be though. But overbuilt is better than underbuilt. Drive side is a bit narrower of a tube than the non-drive side because it's got to fit between the chain ring and the frame. Got way more of this tube than we need. I had to buy six meters of it to build the gasser back in 2020. I've used bits of it for a couple of pinna swing arms. I had to buy that full length just to use about 260 millimeters of each tube. It was slightly painful. So yeah, now we need to cut the lengths that we need on the chop saw and then get it cleaned up so that it's nice, bright, shiny steel. And then to clean out the insides of the tubes, I use my trusty drill with a bit of sandpaper wrapped around a bar. She goes a treat. I would love to know a better way if you've got it. But this works pretty good, so. Got to get the scale off for good welds. Nice clean tube, makes everything a lot easier. Also made up a little fixture jig type thing for squishing the tubes, because you see they're round at the moment, but we need oval ones for the front end of the swing arm. There we go. Got it in the fly press. Use this to squish it. The profile for these are taken straight from the SolidWorks CAD model that Tan designed back in the day. So yeah, it's got quite a flat profile in the middle here, which I think is causing that dimple in the tube here. Well, I know that's what's causing it. We've got some different ones here for the larger tube. And they're a bit more rounded. So I'm going to try that. Let's see these longer bits that I've got to do. See if that gives me a better shape. It wasn't much success trying that different uh, forming die on the fly press. Shapes come out pretty much just the same. It's not to worry though, like I said, the tube's way thicker than we need it to be for strength. Uh, it's just the way that it looks. And also when it's in a complete bike, you won't really notice it too much. So I'm just gonna send it. Right, now we need to do the tube notches. So the front notches are a little bit more tricky than the rear ones. And I'll explain why. So this is my chainstay fixture. I use it to notch all the chainstays and seat stays for all the hardtail frames. It's fully adjustable so that I can do all the different sizes and whatnot. Rear axle and dropouts get mounted in here. And that gives me the length of everything else. You know, so from the rear axle to tire, then I've got rear axle to center of the, the notch. And that corresponds to a thing on the notcher. So getting the rear stays in the swing arm fixture is no bother. I can just put them in here and notch them as I would like a chain stay for a hardtail frame. But the front stays are a little bit more tricky. So because they can only be supported like in one place, there's no other end to it. It's very difficult to get them to sit properly, to get the angle right and the position and all that kind of stuff. Also these clamps here are not designed for these shapes. So ideally I'd need to design new clamps to go around. So the plan is to make some fixtures that go in Cindy so that I can notch them in Cindy and that'll mean the end result is way more accurate. You know, because where I'm holding these in here, getting the notches at the right angle and everything is way more difficult. 
Whereas if I put it in the CNC machine, I know it's going to be exactly right as it comes out, and then I can just put it in the fixture. And as I've got two swing arms to make, I may as well do that because it's going to save a ton of faffing on the notcher and I love an excuse to play with Cindy. This is the fixture I've designed then. Entity of beauty, 3D printed bits to uh, catch the shape of the tube, um, and then a steel plate on the top there just to give it extra support. Big old steel plate at the bottom there. I zeroed in for when I faced and did all the holes, and I'm gonna keep that same zero for doing the rest of the operations. It means I don't have to change anything apart from the tubes. So I've got two of each of those to do, and I've got different clamps for the non-drive side tubes. These ones are the drive side narrower profile, also this uh, seat stay front for the drive side is set at an angle. The rest of them are all 90 degrees, whereas this one has got like a seven, seven degree angle to it. You can have some troubles though. I won't be able to do this bore because this lot's gonna get in the way um, of the tool holder and the spindle and whatnot. So I'm just gonna have to do, do these two and then take that out of the way and do those two. Right, there's nothing else for it, kids. Let's press go. Single block again, because I always fuck shit up. If we take it out and have a look, see how it fits in the fixture. I reckon that's a good plan. So this is straight off the milling machine. Bears and all. And she is beautiful. Fits perfect. And then there were two. Both fit exactly the same as each other. Now that is a win. Would not happen with the notch out. All right, so we're on the chain stay fronts now. Got the seat stay out of the way. Let's press go. Now I'm checking the fit of the chain stay front. It's fitting spectacularly. Props to the fixture maker. Both the swing arm fixture and the notch fixture. Yo, I'm good, aren't I? Making the next chain stay front, drive side. Got the non-drive side bits all programmed now. Set in the vise. Now the, this one is not sticking up in the air. I'm gonna be able to do both in one go. So we'll get both a seat stay and a chain stay out in one operation. Should we send this one without pressing single block? What do you reckon? I'll still keep my finger hovering over the old emergency stop. But let's go for it, eh? No single block, press go.
just got this one in already. Have to take the main pivot out to get that one in. And then we've got the seat stay front to go in. It's a nice tight fit, this one. Tight like a tiger. It's a good sign. It's not going to move when you weld it then. All of the seat stay fronts and chain stay fronts are done now. Onto the back end. Despite what it says on the tube, these are Zona tubes from Columbus. They are 30 millimeters tall by 16 millimeters wide, 0.9 mil wall thickness on the ends, and it tapers down to like a 0.6 mil in the middle, where the tube tapers down to 12.5 mil at the end. I'm just setting the length of the notcher. Three, eight, three. Lock her down. Now we're setting the tire spacing and distance. It's got to be 86 millimeters wide. It's 304 long. It's a little bit wonky this. So I'll get a square on there. So for doing the notches on the rear of the stays where they meet the dropouts, stick them here on Bridget. Bridget, the old bridge port. And that will give me the angle that I can set the chainstay fixture to the angle of the dropouts. Use a little digital angle finder. And we want 20.97, if you can get it. 20.97 is 21, isn't it? So the way this fixture works and the way the dropouts meet in the tube and all that kind of stuff means that I just need to run the cutter up to the edge of the tube there where it meets the dropout and then it all fits. No need to take any sort of measurements and whatnot. So I'll do a few sort of drill cuts first and then do the final cut after that. So we've done that now, and a little quick rotate of the dropout. Bosh, look at that, perfect fit. Now we give them a little bit of a tack, and notch the front end. Final step is a bit of acetone. Get that down your pipe. Clean the dropouts out as well. They've been in the shop last day. Acetone them already. It's all ready for attack. Just a bit for that I am. They fit like a dream. the UDH on this one. I'm going for UDH on mine because I'm hoping that one day Shrine will bring out a T-type system for a downhill mech. So that's what I'm aiming for. Oh yeah, did I mention I'm making one for myself? Now they've got two sets we can crack on to the next stage. The majority of the rollers on the notch are steel and turned down on the lathe. That's a lot of work. And they were made before I had a 3D printer. Made a few 3D printed rollers in the past. That's worked pretty good. Needed a few really small ones. 
and a few really big ones, T47 bottom bracket, not with the 3D printed roller, worked fine. So, got myself a new set. The position that the tubes need to sit in is too wide for the notch about, so we're going to have to do one tube at a time. The drive side seat today needs a bend in it to clear the chain, so we chuck it in this little thing and give it a tweak. So this fixture was designed for chain stays. And as you can see from the results, it works pretty darn good. What it's not so great at is seat stays. We can do the front of the seat stays on here, we can't do the rear. And the reason for that is the way that the fixture has been designed and the way that the chain stays work on my hardtail frames. So the rear axle and the front notch are on a plane, but the rear of the chain stay doesn't sit on that plane. The top of the rear of the chain stay meets the top of that plane, or meets that plane. But the seat stays don't meet in the same way. So we can't do the rear of the seat stay in this fixture. I could do if this rear axle height was adjustable, then we could do it in here. And for, you know, next revision of this, I will have an adjustable bit on here. So we're gonna have to do the old seat stays old school. Kind of where it needs to be. It just needs to be a bit shorter so that it comes higher up the dropout. So it's just a case of taking a little bit off, put it back in, check how it fits, take a bit more off. So the final touch is I'll switch to a file. Take the last little bit off. Like a glove. I think we all can agree that that is quite spectacular. So there you can kind of see an overlap between the tubes. You have to cut one back, cut the other one back to the point where they both intersect nicely. Maybe not as tight as it should be in an ideal world. But we'll fill it with weld and it will all be alright.
now that all the tubes are stuck in, I just need to go around and make sure that there's enough tacks on everything. So I want to try and get at least three tacks on every tube, so that it's got a sort of a triangle effect on the go. Most of the tubes have got two, some of them have got three. But yeah, I just need to work my way around now, get them all done. Now that that is all tacked up and looking like a swing arm, we need to start doing a bit of welding while it's in the fixture. So welding all the tops and bottoms of the tubes um, from the inside to the outside. The reason that we do the tops and the bottoms while it's in the fixture is that when you're welding on the sides, that's going to warp the swing arm, pull these bits in or out and so forth. So do the tops and bottoms of all the tubes while it's in the fixture and the hope that's going to pin it down a bit so that when we weld the sides it moves less. Now that that's all welded, tops and bottoms, you can, and it's cooled down, you can take it out of the fixture and can start building my one. But before we do that, these gussets have got to go in. Not yet, so we've got to do some prep work. So this brown stuff on the top of the steel is mill scale, it's not steel. It forms on top of the steel like during the manufacturing process. I've got to get that off of there before I start welding. Not only is it going to make a weaker weld, but it also messes with like the actual welding process and makes it really difficult to get a good looking weld. Usually I would do it with an angle grinder, but there's a few where this has been folded already, I can't get to all the bits. So I'm like in here, down those edges. So we're going to play with some acid, or rather vinegar, not acid. 20% acidity. Apparently this works for getting mill scale off. I haven't had that great of a success for it in the past. So what I'm going to do is soak this for 24 hours or so and then shot blast it. Should we start getting it out then? It's an exciting moment. So when I weld these up, tops and bottoms, like I said, to try and keep it straight, but I also weld from the inside to the outside. My theory with that is that it's going to pull these bits out rather than in. And that's a good thing at this stage, because when we put the gusset in here, it tries to squeeze everything up, especially at the back end, you know, the chainstay gussets and whatnot that go in there, it just tries to close everything up. So at this stage, I'm trying to spread it out as much as I can. You can kind of see, <clears throat> you can kind of see my theories here. You can see there's a bit of a gap. Yeah, so at this stage, that's good. And then hopefully we can see it here as well. Yeah, bit of a gap. Now we get to start building my one. You have no idea how excited I am. Obviously I've spent a bunch of time 
That's the turning everything, making sure it's all nice and clean and now I'm putting my hands all over it again. But it's just to make sure the insides is clean. Uh, and then I'll give it another wipe down before I start welding. So. So these have been sat in this vinegar for quite a while now, quite a bit longer than 24 hours, maybe something more like a week. Just haven't had the time to get them out and shot blast them, but that's what we're going to do now. So that's them out of the blaster then. So I've got to weld up this relief here. That's basically just a, a bend relief to make bending this edge here a bit easier. Then we need to weld up these little bits down the bottom here. Put a little weld on the inside there before it goes in the frame. And then this outside bit gets welded up when it's in the swing arm. The laser cutter's bent these for me, but they use too tight of a radius. See there it's cracked in some of the spots. And up these edges as well, there's a crack or two. So yeah, 4130 doesn't really like being bent, so it needed a larger, larger radius to avoid this lot. So I'm just going to have to run a weld up those bits as well, just to bring them back to life. Two of those. Check it out, two swing arms. One's mine, one's Lynn's. This one's mine. So I've welded up tops and bottoms of all of these now, and now we need to do the sides. But before you do that, just going to do a little bit of an alignment check just to make sure that things are where I expect them to be. You can see I've chucked these spaces in here. Need those in for welding so that when we weld up the insides it doesn't try and squeeze up. You know, these will be there to stop that squeezing up. We've got one there in the main pivot and then we've got the rear axle in there as well. So this swing arm is held in by the rear axle on centre and then I'm just going to check the position of the main pivots and the rocker link bosses. So we've got 91.8 over here. We're going to be in 91.7. So yeah, that's pretty darn close too. Right about where we need it to be. Good stuff. Now I'd be pretty happy with that as a final result, but obviously that's not the final result. We still have a bunch more welding to do. So we'll do that and then chuck it back on the surface plate to see what it looks like. But for now that gives me confidence that we're in the right place, we're where we need to be, so I can just crack on and start welding.
There we are, two swing arms in the flesh. Pretty sweet, eh? Look at that. Still a ton more to do though, so we'll crack on with that in the next video. If you've made it this far, fair play to you. You probably enjoyed it, so give us a like. Apparently it helps the old algo rhythm. Need all the help I can get with that. Oh yes. Make sure you do all the liking and subscribing. You know you want to. Anyways, keep it sideways till next time.